Yo, welcome back to the channel guys. I am Manticore and you are in the Manticore's Tavern and this is the beginning of my new series called Can You Net Deck and Win? Now I do have a couple of videos where I've already pretty much done this and I've done that with the first place YCS Bogota Chris Lofton's branded Despia deck profile and I've also done it with PAX uh, branded Despia Adventure deck. Um, so those weren't included in the new series. However, I have changed the title to those and I have included them in the new playlist. And I am continuing that today with none other than Danny's uh, Ridgeland, Mississippi first place 60 card Eldritch Control deck. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So this is a deck profile by one of our actual um, players for pop one podcast uh we just recruited him after the win that he had at the regionals uh it was a 60 card eldritch control deck and i am demonstrating that here and it's actually a very good deck if you happen to draw the right cards obviously if you're not drawing the floodgates if you're not drawing the recursive um golden land and eldritch cards such as sanguine and stuff like that that it kind of fails but i did get an 80 percent win rate i am reducing my video or my dual qu quantity from 10 duels to five duels because i think that 10 duels actually makes the video very very lengthy and makes it to where it is too long and i feel like a lot of people don't want to watch these super long videos so going with this here uh we're going to go ahead and normal summon the luber get the brain infusion to our hand and then we're going to go with lubelion and use lubelion's effect to get our mirror jade um although mirror jade's not necessarily the scariest card to have on the field um it is definitely a card that has to be dealt with because during the end phase your opponent has all of his cards destroyed if he does leave the field so i'm gonna go ahead and get my Car scarlet sanguine set i do have an 1800 aluber face up on the field but that's okay i'm willing to take some attack damage um he goes ahead and actually targets my sanguine he knows that was set there so i don't know what his intentions were specifically um i guess he was just trying to make sure that my recursiveness does not occur uh, but we do end up pulling the win here and he does look like he's trying to play some form of drytron uh but it was not drytron it was actually like a dogmatica drytron type of deck not the best thing in my opinion honestly so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that and then he gets the ecclesia because we do have a fusion monster on the field so he just special summons it and now we're gonna go ahead and use lubelion's effect because we sent it for cost for the mirror jade and we're gonna get the branded fusion to our hand again now we do have quite a few choices here in order to secure the win i think we can otk here so we're just gonna go ahead and try to bait out the trap trick that he set earlier and he gets the dimensional barrier and obviously i'm very positive he's going to call fusion because that's all that really matters here i'm gonna go ahead and activate your dear servant and try to clear his board here now i do know that that's the dimensional barrier so the only unknown is this middle one here that's the only one i'm really worried about because i can otk without the dimensional barrier being there it calls fusion i'm pretty sure here and we're just going to go ahead and use eldritch effect engrave and just make a board that he can't stop and we're just going to go ahead and go straight into attack uh, into the battle phase attack over his monsters and there's not really much here i was afraid of something that, that that could be something like a drowning mirror force or something like that but it was not um in one of these duels actually where i do go into battle phase i did remove one of his back rows and it was a drowning mirror force and so i kind of saved my butt there was very happy that i got rid of that uh, but going into the next one we got pot of extravagance uh, typically in this deck i think that people don't want to um stop the pot of extravagance so it's kind of like it's a double whammy for your opponent like they, they don't want you to get the plus two but the, it, it they want to save their ash for the branded fusion so uh they're trying to save it there i don't know if that's what they actually had here but we're gonna go ahead and try to bait it out here and they don't seem to have it so we're sure that they don't have the ash blossom here and we're gonna go ahead and use the necro banshee and this is a really good thing with the Bellion because when we use branded fusion we can send the fallen of albaz and the necro banshee to be able to get our new Be our Lubelion. and then in the same chain link after resolution trying to activate Lubelion's effect again to get the mirror jade we can banish the necro world banshee and get the zombie world on the field and that gives us our uh control variant of this deck because when we have the zombie world we can activate there can be only there can only be one or there can be only one and the rivalry of warlords which then locks our opponent out of you know swarming the field with certain monsters because then they're locked into zombies and there it looks like he i got rid of the drowning mirror force like i said and that stops him from being able to do anything now this next duel i do lose 
Um, again, I've reduced it from 10 duels to uh, five duels in order to reduce the video length. And so I go with an 80% win rate, a win four, lose one. And I do go second here. He has the branded opening. So that's something I need to make sure I try to get rid of in the graveyard uh, before trying to attack into any of his fusion monsters. And it kind of actually ends there. Like it doesn't seem like that was a great board for him, um, but uh, it's, it's going on. I mean, that, it didn't seem like that was a great play, but he does get this uh, Doom King Baldurak on the field. It gets the Mirror Jade on the field. So like it, it was definitely a board that I could not break because he had so much recursive, so much negation, so much destruction, and I couldn't get rid of it. So as you can see, like he's just ending with the Uni Zombie and the uh, Mirror Jade, but then on my standby phase, he gets the Doom King back. I'm gonna attempt to try to get rid of it, but he has enough to be able to stop me and I won't be able to get over this board. So although I do have all these cards in my hand that are very good, you know, I have two Conquistadors, unfortunately drawn to two Conquistadors rather than just one. Um, I tried to activate my Ecclesia's effect, but that gets negated. And I try to activate my Albion's effect in the graveyard, but that gets negated. And then he just has like, then he makes it to where I have no monsters. And so now at this point, the only way I can have any monsters in the field is through Conquistador. Now I attempted to, I wanted to keep Dogmatica Florida in my hand in order to try to keep it on the field for something later, but he does OTK, OTK me here and I wasn't able to pull through with it. So it's just a zombie, it, zombie decks I think are definitely a deck that are worth playing. They're starting to come up for sure. Um, here I try to save it for his big 3k attack, but he had enough attack on the board regardless to stop me and OTK me. So uh, that's the one loss I had. Uh, obviously when you're playing these decks at like regionals and things of that nature, you do have the opportunity to sideboard. So I would have been able to sideboard against his zombie swarms, um, and do different things of that nature. Obviously I did not have the best hand, you know, I didn't have Fauna Valbez. Um, I didn't have this close sanguine just to keep a, to get an Eldritch on the field. And I didn't have the Eldritch in the graveyard to use his effect, to be able to send a card to the graveyard and then to special summon him with 3,500 that can't be destroyed by card effects and things of that nature. So um he just had enough to be able to stop me there and going into this next duel obviously again mirror jade is not the best card to end with you know it's not too scary however it is something that does have to get taken care of because when he leaves the field you can just uh blow up their entire board to Rageki. and so then here i go ahead and he normal summons the gozuki so i go ahead and activate mirror jade's effect to go ahead and get rid of it because after wasting your normal summon there's not really much more you can do the normal summon is like an indication that hey this is this is all i've got and you go ahead and try to stop that to be, prevent them from doing anything uh for, for one instance you know if they have a uh phantom knight deck and they normal summon a phantom knight a lot of their cards require you to have a level three in the field already such as psychic builder psychic tracker um and things of that nature if you can't keep a level three in the field to summon them get rid of it if they have normal summoned already and then be done and then as you saw here uh, I use the Scarlet Sanguine to go ahead and add the Golden Land Forever, which is the negation if I control an Eldritch card. So I wanted to go ahead and draw that, put that in my hand to stop my opponent from doing anything because I don't care if my Eldritch is in the graveyard. Because my next turn, if Eldritch is in the graveyard, I can just use his effect to send one from uh, Spell Trap from the field to the grave, special summon him, and he's a 35 beater with no, uh, with, and that can't be destroyed by card effects. And then here, I was actually kind of scared. I actually kind of thought I was going to lose this because Cyber Angel Natasha is actually very scary. And he was able to take my Eldritch card, uh, I think twice. So him being able to do that was very, very scary. And I thought that I was actually going to lose it, but I was able to pull through with it. I was able to control his board. Um, I was able to prevent him from being able to perform certain effects. And again, that's basically what the deck is. It's a Eldritch, 60 card Eldritch control deck. Um. To be honest, I shouldn't have set these already. I think that I just had so many traps in my hand that I was like, all right, let me go ahead and just set these now. Uh, but, you know, it's just good practice to set your cards in main phase two, which I did not do. But remember, that's just good practice. So I go ahead and get my Eldritch Golden Lord uh, face up on the field with 3,500. Can't be targeted by card effects. And here is one thing that I thought may have worked, right? So I knew that Natasha was in the graveyard. I knew he was going to attempt to take my Golden Lord. I wanted to go ahead and activate Rivalry of Warlords as a chain in response to his Cyber Angel Natasha's effect. And Rivalry of Warlords requires, says that each player can only control one type of monster. Um, the chain links didn't work the way I thought it was because it states that you can banish one other Cyber Angel monsters from your graveyard, then target one monster your opponent controls. 
So he targeted my Eldritch Monster, and then I chained my Reverie of Warlords. I assumed that he would then, you know, my Reverie of Warlords would, spe would resolve, and then he would special summon this, and if he did, take control of that monster. So the way I thought it would work was he would not be able to take my Golden Lord. I thought that with Reverie of Warlords in the field, that would be it. Um, I thought that he just would not be able to take it, but he was able to take it, and because he was able to take it, he was forced to get rid of his Natasha. Um, I thought it would work a different way to where he would keep his angel, his Cyber Angel in the field and my Eldritch would stay on my side of the field, but um, that's okay. Uh, I think that he probably could have gone into the battle phase and attacked. I'm not entirely sure why he did not attack, um, but it's fine. Uh, I got the Rivalry of Warlords. I'm preventing him from being able to get anything on the field. I do want to get rid of the Eldritch because I don't want to just go ahead and crash. Um, I want to go ahead and get some damage on the board, so I go ahead and activate Torrential Tribute. Get rid of the Rivalry of Warlords, that way I can have some other presence on the field next turn. And of course, you know, the Natasha is in the graveyard again, so he can go ahead and do it again, which is a freaking nutty card. Um, Natasha is definitely not a card that I like, but he's going on here. I thought that I was going to end up losing. I thought he was going to get something big on the board that was going to create some huge board presence and be able to prevent me from doing anything. But uh, the Gozen match here, I, I had the Gozen match. It's not going to help me because his entire deck is light monsters, right? So he's playing this Drytron Cyber Angel deck. All light monsters, so goes in match would not help me here. Um, definitely having the Ivory of Warlords still in the field would have been very beneficial for me. He goes ahead and gets rid of it anyways, so even if it was a Ivory of Warlords or there can be only one, he would have stopped me either way. And here, he doesn't actually go into Natasha, right? He goes ahead and just summons all these monsters and gets Underworld Goddess of the Closed World on the field. My personal opinion, I think it would have been a better play for him to use Natasha and take my monster. However, I guess there's some sort of claws that I'm missing that uh, prevents him from being able to attack or something like that because I think he probably would have had game if he would have used Natasha instead. Now I go ahead and activate my brand of fusion here, get my Lubelion on the field, use, use Lubelion with ne Necro World Banshee, banish Necro World Banshee to get the zombie world just in case I draw into another floodgate later. And I go ahead and activate Mirror Jade's effect, get rid of the 4k because I have nothing that can attack over that. Now that's gone, now I go ahead and special summon my Outlet to Golden Lord on the field, and I just go ahead and attack for game here. So going into the extra deck here, as you guys can see, it is a 60 card main deck and a 15 card extra deck with the side deck. However, because we are playing Omega and we're doing best of ones, we don't ever really go into the side deck. So do remember that as you guys are going through these deck profiles, remember that in the actual TCG, we do best of three, where we do utilize our side decks, which also gives us advantage and requires us to have knowledge based on what our opponents are playing and what is best to draw into to prevent our opponent from winning. So with the deck profile, we have the three Eldritch to Golden Lords. Again, we're playing 60 cards. Now, do know that most Eldritch decks only play two. However, we are playing a larger volume of cards, so we do require the three because we do want to see it. And on top of that, we also don't want two of our Golden Lords to get banished, which happens often, which is one of my goals when I'm playing against an Eldritch deck. Uh, so when you're playing against them, you know, they'll be like, all right, I got rid of two. He should only have two, so I'm good to go. But we do, in fact, play three, which gives us an advantage because they don't expect it. We have the three Cursed Eldlands because this is a searcher to get our recursive uh, Golden Land cards to go to our graveyard to be able to keep the grind game going. We do run the uh, one Eldlixer of Black Awakening because this is also a searcher basically for the Golden Lords and the traps and things of that nature, as well as the one Eldlixer of White Destiny, which is also a searcher. We have the three Scarlet Sanguines here because this gives us our Golden Lord and puts it on the field. And when it's in the graveyard, we can use it to banish it to search for our Joaqueros and our Conquistadors and put them on the field, which continues the grind game, as I said earlier. Uh, we run the two Joaqueros. Specifically, I think the reason why he ran two uh, is because DPE is no longer a huge threat because Anaconda is banned. With the banning of Anaconda, we don't see DPE in basically every single deck, so we're not running into that and requiring ourselves to banish it. Uh, so the two is fine. We have the three Conquistadors because it's a pop on the field why why wouldn't we want that so the three maxed out pops and spot removal is fantastic to have here we have the one golden land forever um i do know that a lot of golden or not golden land eldritch decks don't play golden land forever however it's a perfect option here to search for because 
if we have the Eldritch on the field and we want to negate something, we can negate it. And it puts the Golden Lord in the graveyard for our next turn to be able to put him on the field with 3,500 with the effect that allows it to not be destroyed by card effects. So why not have it here? We're playing 60 cards. Why not throw it in there? Uh, we have the two Alubers because this searches for our branded fusions, which allows us to get an extra body on the board because that's pretty much the only thing we really go into. So we only go into the Mirror Jade or uh, Albion or Lubelion or something like that. So it's there for that reason. We have the two Fallen of Albaz, three makes it Bricky. Two is fantastic. If you ever have to go into the third, it's almost no good for you. Um, uh, we use the branded the three branded fusion here in conjunction with the Fallen of Albaz as well as a Necro World Banshee because we can use the Fallen of Albaz and the Necro World Banshee to special summon Albion or not Albion, uh, Lubelion. And then uh, in the next chain, we use Albion to get our Mirror Jade, but then we can also use the Necro World Banshee as a chain link too to banish it and put Zombie World on the field, which is part of the reason why we're playing this deck because we're playing a control variant, which allows us to use the Gozen match, the there can be only one in the rivalry of Warlords to prevent our opponents from putting too many monsters in the board. Uh, so then there obviously, again, the one Zombie World that we use with the Necro World Banshee. Uh, we have the three Dogmatic of Punishments because it's a spot removal and we also play the Entis and things that we need. Um, we can also send the Albion to the graveyard to be able to set the, or to add a Brand of Fusion to our hand the next uh, at the end phase. Um, so just great card for spot removal. We have the two Nadir Servants because this searches our Fallen of Albaz or our Dogmatica cards and adds them to our hand so if you need the fauna of in your hand to normal summon you can normal summon it and then use his effect to get rid of a monster on their field um and in conjunction with that we can also use it with Entis. we have the florida lee here we have two ecclesias because this searches our dogmatica card so you get this onto the field to get our dogmatica punishment and then we're it's just basically building up our board to, to destroy our opponent's board we do have three Mystic Minds here. Um, I do remember Danny in the video with the Pop One Podcast channel stating that he wants to increase the number of Mystic Minds essentially. Now I know you can only run three Mystic Minds, but he wants to run it at nine by running the three Mystic Minds, running three Demise of the Lands, which allows you to activate a Mystic Mind directly from the deck. The Metaverse, which allows you to activate a uh, the Mystic Mind directly from the deck, and then the Terraformings and Planet Pathfinders, I do believe. So, trying to max out a Mystic Mind to be able to control our opponent even more. Uh, we do have the Rivalry of Warlords because this prevents our opponent from spamming monsters on the board and it keeps them uh, at only one type of monster on the field, which is essentially going to be a zombie. So, if they have, if they're not playing zombies, they won't be able to get anything else on the board. The Gozen match, uh, I think that he was talking about taking this out because it only controls attributes. Now, I do know that some decks play a bunch of different attributes, such as Sword Soul. Uh, you know, they play like Fire, Wind, and Water, and things of that nature. However, there are other decks, such as the one that I lost in the replay, where they play only Light. So, Gozen match was really kind of useless against them. We have the There, three on, there Can Only Be Ones, um, stating that each player can only control one monster of each type. Uh, so, again, you know, for Sword Souls, they can't put uh the Oye on the field and then put the token on the field because the token is the same type as that monster so uh they that's that's fantastic also uh we have the three skill drains this card does not deserve to be at three but it's there and while it is at three we're going to utilize it to be able to control our opponent even more we have the three extravagance your opponent typically will not ash the extravagance they'll just let you get the plus two which is what we want to see we want to have draw power um but they typically won't ash it because they want to save it for the branded fusion if they ash branded fusion that's fine we have other cards in our hand to be able to control the deck uh, we have three super polys because this is here to be able to get into our eldritch to mad golden lord so all we have to have is like golden lord on the field and then if we have zombie world in the field if they have a level five or higher monster it turns into a zombie so you can super poly into this if you want to you can super poly into starving venom fusion dragon mud dragon drag of just lots of targets to super poly with uh, which I don't think I actually drew into at all during any of my replays, which is weird. Um, we have the two Torrential Tributes because this is a board wipe and the Ice Dragon's Prison, which is a fantastic card. Devin got third place at Regional. He was also a pop one player and he stated that this was a fantastic card during, in his deck and he utilized it, I think, in every single duel. So fantastic card obviously works very well. And then the one called by because called by is called by. Going into the extra deck here, uh, specifically because we run the Extravagance at three. So we don't want to accidentally banish all three of our uh, Mirror Jades. We want to make sure that we have at least one copy of these um, branded fusion targets so maximize these as much as we can to be able to make sure we can still use our branded fusions and our super polys and things of that nature so again we're running three mirror jades because mirror jades busted card 
We have the three Albions, which allows us to search for Brand Fusion and get other monsters to the field. We have the two Lubelions because this gives us our Mirror Jade. We have the Titanic Lad because this allows us to search for uh, Fallen of Albaz. Search or Special Summon a uh, the Ecclesia or the Fallen of Albaz. So then if you Special Summon Albaz with it, you can use its effect. Discard a card, Fusion Summon something, and then get gets rid of a problem pro problem card on their side of the field. We have the Eldritch the Mad Golden Lord, like I stated earlier, if you have Zombie World on the field, if they have a level 5 or higher and you have a Golden Lord, you can use Super Poly with it. Starving Venom uh, Fusion Dragon here because it's a Super Poly target. A Dragon of the Swamp is a Super Poly target. Entis is here because we will send it off of Dogmatic of Punishment or Nadir Servant to destroy a card and use its effect to pop an additional card. We have the Draco Sepelia as a Super Poly target as well. And then we also have Omega and he was talking about taking this out for Link Spider. Um, I don't think we would ever really go against this unless we're playing against a Gamma, but even then, uh, you really only use it for like its uh, its end fate or its last effect here, stating that you can, uh, what is it? Um, during your opponent's standby phase, you can target one banished card. What is it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, he's talking about taking this out and putting the Link Spider because Link Spider would be useful for him. And then going into the side deck, unfortunately, you know, because we we're playing Omega and I'm doing best of ones, we never really go into the side deck. So take that with a grain of salt also, although I did lose that first door. Remember that in the TCG, you do play a best of three. So had I lost that one, I would side deck against cards, uh, you know, side deck cards to prevent my opponent from making the boards he was and uh, prevent him from doing things. So obviously, like if he had Alderac on the field, uh, I would use Lava Golem or I would use... Uh, evenly matched because he was playing a Eldritch variant, you know, I banished his zombies so he couldn't do things. So there's things you can do to prevent your opponent from being able to get an advantage of you when you are playing in a best of three. But that's going to be it for the deck profile, guys. Remember to make sure you join the Pop One Podcast Hangout Discord server with the link down below. We do a bunch of remote duels almost every single night. We have remote duel tournaments every now and then. We do master duel tournaments. We do giveaways. We talk about anime, toys, art, and all kinds of stuff. A great community full of nerds. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Peace.